Hey guys, I usually get this video out on Mondays, but I was doing a lot of traveling this week, so I'm getting it out today on Tuesday. Also, because I was traveling and I have employees that ship everything out, I wasn't able to record things as they sold. So I'm not gonna be showing you guys the things that sold this week. I'm actually just gonna be showing you guys things that have sold within the last like 20 hours. Or last 20 hours, I think we have had 19 sales. So we're averaging just under a sale per hour. So quarter four is really, quarter three, heading into quarter four, really starting to ramp up. So really excited to show you guys what sold and hopefully give you some tips and tricks along the way. All right, we sold these vintage, not even sure how you pronounce that, we'll say Varnet. I had these listed, I bought them for a dollar, had these listed for 70. Um, I received a, a ton of low, low ball, not low ball offers, but just lower offers of like 30, 25, 18, 32. And then about seven days after they were listed, someone offered me 52 and I took that. Every so often, I'll put a Facebook post into my local community online yard sale page and I'll say, hey, I buy baseball bats or I buy sunglasses and I post pictures of these. And so this guy reached out and he sold me 10 pairs of Oakleys. These are Christian Dior's. Um, I think it had a few Ray-Bans in it. He sold me 10 pairs for $60, so $6 each. These Christian Dior's were listed for about 80 days, maybe 100. I think, it, I think it's less than 80. It might be like 75, but it might be closer to 100. I'm not sure. And these sold for $108 plus shipping. And yeah, really awesome flip. Um, I'll talk about this for a second too. All right, so this is some advice that I've given on my channel before, but I just wanted to give a little bit more detailed advice because sometimes people actually reach out to me and say that they've tried this and it doesn't work. But this is some really sound advice to get more inventory and to get it at pretty good prices sometimes. And that is going not on Facebook Marketplace, because you can't do this on Facebook Marketplace, it violates their policy, but on, you can type in like, let's say you live in Covington, Covington, Louisiana. I would go to Facebook and I would type in Covington, Louisiana online yard sale. And there's probably gonna be like one to 20 groups called online yard sale, New Orleans, um, Northern Bay area, or Covington, Louisiana yard sale, all, all these things, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. Go to these pages and then take a picture. This is important. Take a picture and say, I buy baseball bats and show them all the baseball bats you have. If you just put out a, if you just put out in text, hey, I buy baseball bats and you don't actually show the picture, you're not gonna get as many messages because people don't know that you are actually buying baseball bats. It's just like a little pipe dream, like, hey, I buy baseball bats. But if you show them, look, I have 80 baseball bats, I am buying them, please sell me yours, you're gonna get a lot better results. Same with like showing them, oh my goodness. Same with showing them like, hey, I buy sunglasses, here's several, several hundred of them. Please let me buy your sunglasses. That's how I got this deal, is I posted with a picture of hundreds of sunglasses, hey, I buy sunglasses. I don't recommend saying, hey guys, I buy sunglasses, baseball bats, men's shirts, toys, um, cooking appliances, shoes. If any of you guys have any of that, please let me know you're gonna get maybe a couple messages. But if you specifically say, I'm looking for this with a picture, you're gonna get a ton of messages about this. All right, we sold another VHS player, this Panasonic right here. It sold for $37 plus $15 in shipping. I'm noticing these sell consistently throughout the year. They're an evergreen item, I really like them. And if you price them correctly and use the right keywords and stuff, you're gonna be selling them all year long to old folks' homes and things like that but then you definitely sell even more of them heading into quarter four. This is a great Christmas gift, even in used condition, because you just can't buy new VHS players anymore. So people are looking these up on eBay and getting them as Christmas gifts. We sold another Guitar Hero guitar. This one is broken. Um, the blue and green button doesn't work. You need all of them to work properly, especially the green one. So I put that in the listing. Usually this guitar sells it's like $120 to $140 shipped. Um, this one sold for $35 plus shipping because it's broken and uh, they clearly know that it's broken. I, I highlighted that several times in the listing. 
But fingers crossed, you never know. Sometimes people just refuse to look at the descriptions and the conditions. <laughs> this is my least favorite part of this job. I make content to help you guys, but it's also to make money. I make money off of AdSense. I also make money off of partnerships. And I'm super excited to announce that I'm now working with Whatnot. I know most of you guys know what Whatnot already is, but I just wanted to announce that I have been accepted into the ambassador program. I'll be doing a little bit of selling on Whatnot, mainly just basketball cards. I might start selling plushes and other things. I don't know. I don't think I'll be selling too much outside of basketball cards on the platform, but I would really appreciate it. If you guys haven't signed up for Whatnot, use my link below. It's an awesome affiliate link that makes me a really good amount of money that I'm really excited about working with them for. So if you guys haven't signed up for Whatnot and you want to create an account, you'll get $15. And, and if you make any purchase on Whatnot, I get a really awesome commission from that. So if you want to support the channel in that way, you can do so. Link below. I sold this red Wii here. Yeah, I'll show you guys a little better. Huh, look at that. Look at that. Didn't even tumble. Sold this red Wii, no cords, nothing like that. I have the proper cords to test, so I tested it and made sure it works. It's uh, different from a normal Wii. This one sold without the cords or anything for $30 plus shipping. I accepted an offer. I think I had it listed for $40. Definitely uh, will take $30, and I bought this for $7. You're definitely going to want to look out for trackball mouses. All major hardware computing companies have them. Logitech, Microsoft, all that good stuff. This sold for $45 plus shipping. Logitech and Microsoft especially have these wheels. Sometimes they're red, sometimes they're blue, sometimes they're green. But definitely look for just these really weird, obscure looking mouse. Mice? Mouses? Computer mouses? Computer mice? I don't know. But yeah, uh, this was $3, selling it for $45 plus shipping. Awesome flip in my books. This is my favorite part of each video is showing you guys remote controls that look fairly worthless and let you know that this sold for $50 plus shipping. My dad found this for a yard sale for me for 25 cents. <laughs> so a lot of people ask me, again, I talk about this all the time. How do you know which remotes to grab? I don't. I just look up each individual model number every single time I come across the remote and I get shocked every day that you find a JVC remote that looks unassuming for $50. This Babyless Pro, really cool. This was only listed for about 12 or 14 hours. It sold immediately for $50 plus shipping. Um, yeah, these, these things sell really well. And that InStyler behind it is a really good thing to look for as well. Got two of them. But yeah, these things sell quick. Quit sleeping on them. Here's another quick eBay lesson. This uh, Mountain Hardware jacket really awesome. Sold it for 50 bucks. I actually had it listed for $140 because I, I don't know, I guess just during the time when I was doing my comp research, I thought that was a good price for it. Um, it's at all summer, obviously. I knew it would. And then I started to get offers for $35, $40, $35, And so I looked it up and I actually saw that this wasn't selling for as much as I thought. So I lowered it down to $80 plus shipping, and then it started to get a ton more views and more offers, and so I'm like, okay, sweet. So I just, I priced it wrong at 140, obviously. I just learned from that, I put it up for 80, and I probably could have gotten 80 if I held out because it's going into the winter, but I like to move things, I like to make money. So I sold it for $50 plus like $12 in shipping. And then we sold another one of these CenturyLink internet routers. Um, I bought this for $5 and it sold for $40 plus shipping almost immediately. Everyone on TikTok thought I was a fool, but uh, you know how we do here. And that leads me to one more tip and then we'll hop off here. You guys want to find things that sell really well that, that are in your area specifically. I'll put this back up here real quick. For example, CenturyLink isn't super huge on the East Coast. Many of you guys on the East Coast probably don't even know what CenturyLink is. But here in the Rocky Mountain areas of Colorado, Utah think uh, Wyoming and Arizona, that area. It's one of the biggest internet companies here, so we f I find those routers here very often. Cool, K-U-H-L. It's headquartered here in my home state of Utah. It's in West Valley, Utah by Salt Lake. I find cool all the time, but someone in Baltimore may find it periodically, but not all the time. So you want to just, just look around your state. You can even Google what companies were started in Virginia, if you live in Virginia. What companies were started in 
Kentucky. Find those companies and then really keep an eye out and, and start looking for those items because you're going to find them more often. And you're going to sell them to people that live close to you. Save on shipping, save on the headaches of things breaking. If things get returned, the shipping is less on the return. Things like that. You definitely want to be looking for these items. I hey guys, I just wanted to say one more thing before I hop off. I just feel, I feel like there's someone out there or maybe multiple that just need to hear this, but it's okay. It's okay to accept help. I'm the guy that, like, this is, like, it's hard for me. I hate, I hate being helped. I just want to do everything. Not because I'm a control freak, but I, I just don't want to be a burden to other people. I want to enhance other people's life. And I, for whatever reason, I don't like it when other people enhance mine. Because I just want to, I just, I just want, I don't know. What I want to say is a lot of you guys won't accept help a lot like me. And I'm slowly learning very slowly, that when you let other people help you, it does help you, but it actually helps them. And allowing other people to serve you is helping them feel like they're contributing and helping them feel like they're a better person. And the help helps you be a better person too. I, I don't know if other people struggle with this like I do. I don't know, quick story, and uh, most people have already clicked away by now anyway, so this is, this is to this is to just a select few of people, I guess, but that they actually kind of want to hear about my life, because I know some of you guys do, I know a lot of people don't, and that's okay, but uh, I, did, I did summer sales, as a lot of you guys know, and I went out to a different state, and I didn't have a ton of money, and I didn't make a ton of money right off the bat, so I had my own apartment with some other bros, and I had no food. <laughs> I was eating. It was that. It was that classic story of, of taking the risk, accepting an awesome job that you make zero dollars per hour. It's one hundred percent commission, and, and you you die or fly. And uh, I was making just enough money to pay the bills and to eat ramen noodles and PB and J sandwiches. And then uh, and then my manager, not my manager, the owner of the company, he came to my apartment. Because I had a really good sales week. I made him a lot of money and, I'd, and I made myself a lot of money that week. But I hadn't seen the money yet because the paycheck hadn't hit. And so this guy, he comes over to my apartment. He opens up the cabinets and he says, what the heck, man? And, he, and he's like, we're buying you some food tonight. And I said, no. I, and I was much more prideful then than I am now. And I said, absolutely, you will not buy me food. I do not need your help. And uh, <clears throat> he somehow convinced me to go to Kroger and he bought me 400 <laughs> this is weird <clears throat> I didn't know I was doing this today he bought me $400 worth of food from Kroger that I was able to eat for the next two weeks and be able to focus on my job more and yes it made him more money and maybe it was just a business play all along but him just reaching out and helping me it just helped us out both so much and it was it was just a really awesome moment that I that I don't necessarily want to go into in too much detail but both of us just felt amazing when uh, when he bought that food for me so accept help from other people guys